Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? These people have obviously never heard that song. For as long as there have been powerful people in the world, there have been many more that have wanted to take them down. And there could be a lot of reasons for that. Maybe the powerful person is a monster. Or maybe the one trying to take him down is. Either way, out of all of the assassinations that have ever occurred throughout time, there have been some that were particularly notable for how they went down. Either because of the craziness of how it went down, or because of the unbelievable consequences that followed that impacted history forever. So, I say we jump right into it. Here are the 10 most unbelievable assassinations of all time. Number one is the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. I'm bringing you guys this one first because this death led to a major, major chain reaction. On June 28th, 1914, Franz Ferdinand, the Archduke of Austria, and thus the heir to the Austrian throne, was visiting the territory of Sarajevo with his wife Sophie. The pair of them were intercepted by a member of the Black Hand when the car that they were traveling in turned into an alleyway. Side note, if you're a royal, don't travel down a dark alleyway. Way. Miraculously, each of them only took one bullet, but that was all the assassin, 19-year-old Gavrilo Princip, needed to take both of their lives. But like I was saying, the real significance of this event was that those murders created a chain reaction that ultimately led to World War One. See, this is why you should never do anything bad to anybody, because you never know what kind of chain reaction it could cause. Like, for example, you leave a comment on this video, and I don't know, I don't like it, and then I find out who you are, and I pay you a visit. But hey, who knows? On to number two. Number two is the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. This is easily one of the most famous assassinations in American history and possibly the world. On April 14th, 1865 at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., around 10.13 p.m., John Wilkes Booth, a rather famous actor at the time, shot the president at point-blank range in the back of the head. Lincoln was simply sitting in his state box watching a play. Immediately after the shooting, Booth fought with Major Rathbone, the president's guest in the box, stabbed him once, and then left from the balcony breaking his leg in the fall. This guy thought he was Spider-Man. Ah, but to top off his theatrical assassination, Booth stood proudly and exclaimed those famous words, Six Semper Tyrannus, which means, thus always to tyrants. That was of course right before half running and half hobbling off. Astonishingly, he actually managed to avoid capture for 12 days with a broken leg. That was before he was shot dead by Sergeant Boston Corbett. I feel like this assassination in particular was just done in the heat of the moment because he didn't really think about his escape plan because jumping off a balcony and breaking your leg isn't really, uh, you know, an efficient way of escape. Number three is the assassination of Julius Caesar. This is perhaps one of, if not the most infamous assassination in history. Back in the first century BC, Roman military man and political figure Julius Caesar had just been declared dictator after a civil war in the Roman Republic. However, on March 15, 44 BC, Caesar arrived at the Senate only to be surrounded by 60 senators, all of which were part of the assassination. Yeah, somebody wasn't liked. Almost every single one of them took part in the assassination and stabbed him over 23 times. Seems like a little bit overkill, but okay. That's when he uttered those famous final words which people still use today, a tu Brute? The words meaning, and you Brutus, referring of course to his friend Brutus, who also ultimately took part in his death. After his death, the Roman Republic was no more, and from the ashes rose the Roman Empire. Well, you definitely know you're not liked when 60 separate people shank you to death. <laughs> Number four is the assassination of John Lennon. In addition to being an artist, writer, record producer, and activist, John Winston Lennon is a legendary figure who is one of the founding members of the Beatles. You know, the Beatles, that famous band from the UK. Wow, I've got to work on my British accent. A sensation the world over, Lennon did his best to spread a message of peace. However, on the evening of December 8th, 1980, just before 11 p.m., the singer and his wife, Yoko Ono, had just arrived at their New York apartment when Mark David Chapman approached them, fatally shooting Lennon. However, the truly shocking part about this is that this occurred only six hours after the former Beatle gave Chapman an autograph. And the worst part about it is that he did it just so he could be known 
known as the man who killed Lennon. Immediately after shooting Lennon, Chapman put his gun down, sat on the pavement, and read Catcher in the Rye until the police arrived and arrested him with no incident. The job is done, I'll just read this book now. <laughs> that is just, that's creepy, that's nightmare stuff. Number five is Operation Anthropoid. Reinhard Heydrich was a Nazi leader that was selected by Hitler himself. He became a prime target of a joint assassination plot between British intelligence and Czech rebels, which, if successful, would be a major hit to Hitler. Major hit to Hitler. Two soldiers named Jan Kubis and Joseph Kabzik were tasked with killing Heydrich in Prague on May 27th, 1942. Oh, but the way that it went down. As the target's car pulled up to a corner, Kabzik tried to open fire with a machine gun only to have it jam at that very moment. Panicked, Kubis then threw a grenade, blowing up half the car and injuring himself and the target. However, this bad luck was amplified by the fact that Hydrix survived the initial attack. However, finally, days later, Hydrix's injuries resulted in an infection that ended up taking his life. Okay, wow, man, if you are going to plan an assassination, make sure your equipment's gonna work. I'm not saying assassinate anyone. I'm just saying, you know, if you're gonna do a job, do it right. And don't panic and don't make your gun jam. And don't throw grenades, don't blow yourself up. Just don't even assassinate anyone, that's the easiest thing. Number six is the assassination of Martin Luther King. An American activist, humanitarian, and Baptist minister, Martin Luther King Jr. was the leader of the civil rights movement who stood against racial discrimination using nonviolent civil disobedience. However, somehow, he actually survived every attack. That was, sadly, until April 4th, 1968, when a man police believed to be James Earl Ray shot King in the face with a rifle while the activist stood on the balcony of his motel room. The shot was made from across the street at a fair distance, and King was hit in the jaw, the bullet striking his spinal cord before embedding it in his shoulder. Riots then broke out in over 60 US cities following the shooting, prompting President Johnson to declare a day of mourning. If you're a racist, you're a dick. That's all, nothing more to say, just a little PSA for you guys. Moving on. Number seven is the assassination of Grigoris Lambrakis. Greek politician Gregoris Lambakis had made himself a thorn in the side of the right-wing government in the early 1960s, protesting the war in Vietnam and various other government-sanctioned actions. His activism had become such a menace to the Greek government that they wanted him, uh permanently removed. So, the government actually hired two assassins to kill him. How they pulled this off, though, is really just the, the mind twister here. They pulled up in a simple three-wheeled scooter of sorts and attacked Lambrakis during an anti-war speech in full view of the public and several police officers and clubbed him to death with bats. Suffering severe brain injuries, Lambrakis died in hospital shortly afterwards. You know, I could make a police brutality joke, but I feel like they've had enough of a hard time over the last year, so we're just gonna leave that one alone. Number eight is the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Though it was a shorter term than most presidents, John Fitzgerald Kennedy witnessed a lot during his presidency, including the civil rights movement, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and the space race. On November 22nd, 1963, just before 12.30 p.m., President Kennedy was traveling with his motorcade through the streets of Dallas when he was shot via rifle three times. He died shortly shortly after in the hospital while Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for his murder. However, what makes this assassination truly unbelievable is that while there were literally hundreds of witnesses to the assassination, it remains one of the biggest mysteries in US history. If you Google it, you will find an incredible number of conspiracy theories that claimed that the shooter was not Oswald due to the magic bullet theory and that the government itself may have been involved in the president's death, among several other theories that exist. But I warn you, when you look up government conspiracies, that is a rabbit hole you do not want to go down because you will become one of those people that doesn't leave their house and wears a tinfoil hat. They're coming to get you. Number nine is Operation Ogre. Okay, you'd think Michael Bay planned this next one. In 1973, four Basque commando separatists decided to take out Spanish Prime Minister Luis Carrero Blanco in a mission dubbed Operation Ogre. Posing as simple art students and renting a basement apartment, the commandos dug a tunnel under the street Blanco traveled down to get to mass. Then, they packed the tunnel with over 80 kilograms of explosives that they'd stolen previously from a government 
government warehouse. On December 20th, 1973, as Blanco's car pulled up, the crew detonated the bombs. The vehicle was hurled over 20 meters into the air, actually going over a five-story building. However, in a truly extraordinary turn of events, every single occupant in that car was killed except Blanco, though he later did succumb to his injuries in what would ultimately become possibly the biggest overkill ever. If you use that many explosives and you still don't get the job done on like the first try, you should probably just retire because you're a crappy assassin. And number 10 is the axe wielding bear. This assassination is both hard to comprehend and just plain weird. Jörg Yenetisch was an infamous Swiss murderer and traitor. Overall, just a really bad guy. On January 24th, 1639, Yenetisch was at a carnival surrounded by a number of his friends, all of which wore masks and costumes. Because that's what you do at a carnival, right? Nothing weird about it. I'm getting there. Well, as it turns out, they weren't exactly all friends because a group approached him, led by a man in a full body bear costume. Suddenly, the bear, who I could only assume would do little bear tricks, little cute little bear tricks, suddenly pulled out an axe and chopped the man to death in plain sight. They did this in plain sight with many witnesses and fleed immediately afterwards with a handful of co-conspirators. To this day, it still isn't known why the bear went all cuckoo, but it was probably the first and only bear man to have assassinated someone with an axe. Hey kids, I'm a friendly bear, watch me do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the trick. <laughs> well, that ending was weird. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you did, be sure to press that red subscribe button so that you can subscribe to my channel. And remember to add me to Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram, because if you don't, I'm going to send the friendly bear after you. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I don't even know who the bear man is, but you never know.